Um, I do have, uh, and just let me know if I'm talking too loud or, or not loud enough. Uh, it feels loud to me, but I want to make sure that it's just the right level for you. Um, I do want to say a few things, and I'm, I appreciate you know, everything that you say and that we said a few minutes ago. Um, I'm here in a place of learning, healing, and understanding. Um, I knew Jim for a couple of years. I was just getting close to him before he was killed. Around September, October, I had a pink discoloration on my lip, and I asked him, uh, Jim was a pediatrician, Jim was a doctor. Well, who was this? Jim, Jim Waller. Jim Waller, who was killed on November 5th. Yeah. He was my stepfather. I knew him for a couple of years, and in about September, I had a, uh, a thing on my lip, and I asked him what it was, and he said he thought it was empatigo, but he wasn't sure that I needed a second opinion. Um, and I asked him where I could do that, and he said, at the uh, March, uh, on November 3rd, there would be some doctors also, uh, like Bill uh, Sampson, Paul Bermanzon, and Mike Nathan. Um, so on that morning, I saw Mike. On that morning, I saw Mike Nathan. I asked him, uh, what's this? Uh, do you know what this is on my lip? And he said, it's empatigo. And I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, definitely it is. And I was anxious to tell Jim that he was right, because he was always very confident and sure, but he... And, once in a while, like that, when he told me about my lip, he wasn't sure. So I was anxious to tell him that he was right, and I was lucky to find him. And I told him, I said, Jim, uh, you were right that, um, you know, that it's Mike. I asked Mike what it was, and he said it was empatigo. It's definitely empatigo. And he said um, something to the effect of, you know, can we talk later, or we need to talk later, because he was busy setting up the speakers. Um, and I said, sure. So then there was some singing, and I crossed the street. And this is to the best of my memory. I crossed the street and joined the singing for a while. Uh, then that just sort of didn't feel right, so um, I, I moved over to a pile of signs. And I bent down, and I, I was about to pick up a sign um, and when I heard a, re a really loud noise. And I didn't know what it was, and I kind of, I think I stood there for a second and turned to my right, and I didn't see anybody or anything. And then I turned to my left, and I saw a whole bunch of people running, including my mother. And um, I followed them into this, at the time, there was a stranger's apartment, but later I learned that her name is Mrs. Greenlee. She lived at Morningside Homes, uh, and she took people in. And there were about 30, I'm thinking there were about 30 uh, adults and kids that, that were in her apartment. And we were all just kind of, you know, we didn't know what was happening. A uh, few people, like my mother, uh, went back to find out what was happening. Uh, and, um, and, you know, we thought, or at least I did, and maybe some other people thought that whatever was happening, we would figure, you know, they would figure out and, they, you know, let us know, and, and then we would just continue our day just as normal. And at some point, I'm thinking probably about 20 minutes later or so, my mother came and, and got me uh, from the apartment, from Miss Greenlee's apartment. And, um, and, she t and as we were running, we ended up going to the hospital, but uh, as we were running, my mother told me, um, Jim is dead, and others are dead and wounded. And um, I also, I knew Bill Sampson for a couple of years. Uh, he and his wife, Dale, got married in our backyard, and, and I knew him uh, really well, who was also killed uh, that day. Um, and Sandy, I had kind of seen her speak sometimes. I don't feel like I knew Sandy, you talk about Sa Sandy Smith? Sandy Smith, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for... Uh, I never saw her. Right. Well, anyway, so I mean, I'd seen her kind of over time because I'd gone to marches and demonstrations and, and stuff, and I heard her speak. I don't feel like I knew her. I didn't know her as well as Bill or uh, Jim. Um, but anyway, so my mother, <coughs> my mother and I were at, um, you know, the hospital, and we were, you know, we were... Um, you know, calling loved ones to let them know we were okay, and we were with, uh, I think, Paul Bermanson and Mike Nathan, who were injured, still injured at that point. Um, but anyway, I mean, there, um, at the time, it was, you know, it was kind of very chaotic and overwhelming for everyone, but especially for kids, because I was 11, there were kids younger than me, uh, there was at least one person I know of who was in the womb, um, maybe more. Um, um, and right afterwards, I, I myself, was filled with a lot of um, anger and, and hatred, which, 
which grew like an emotional cancer. The anger and hatred just grew so much, and I hated anything that was connected to people or ideas that, you know, that did harm that day. And it wasn't, they get, you know, it's more than just the people, it just grew and grew, and it, it just, it just consumed me. Hatred as, as I imagine, as I imagine, right, as I imagine you, you know. Um, so I, I see, I, what I kind of compare it to is kind of a black hole because it was just, it was just so empty. And, but then I, I realized that I'm in control of my thoughts and feelings. And 26 years ago, there were some people who were in a lot of control, maybe with a cigarette dangling from their mouth. And they were just in very control and they knew what was happening. But for me and others, it was very chaotic and overwhelming. Um, but it's been, I've had 26 years, I'm, I'm a man now, and I've had 26 years of learning and healing. And I realized that the best thing to do is to really understand as much as possible to learn and heal. I also realized that no one, to me, in my, the way I see it, is that at the time I saw maybe some people as, as gods and other people as monsters, but that's not true. I don't see that anymore, that, that we are all human beings. And that I believe that, that everyone is born good, connected, smart, and loving. But sometimes when we get hurt, we get wrong information, and those things aren't fixed, we hurt ourselves and each other. So I continue to explore ways that, that I and others, you know, we disconnect from ourselves, our own humanity, and from other people. And they range anything from a small thought, maybe like holding a you know, a wallet because we're afraid of a particular person or something, or, you know, small action, or large thought or action that, you know, leads to seriously hurting or, or killing someone. Um, but, I, but I appreciate your listening, and I appreciate everything that, to me, uh, like I said, that... May I say um, something, please? Yeah. I appreciate your coming and being honest with me. I want you to go ahead. I just want you to know, listen, I want you to be honest with me because I have suffered. I woke up every morning with this on my mind, why, why God, why? I believe in God. I believe in the eternal God and I believe that we're all of the same creation. Mm -hmm. And for many years before this, I wanted to sit down and talk with y'all. How did this happen? I mean, I didn't know those people, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you're here telling what you're telling because I needed that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, she tell you, I went to sleep crying, didn't I say, listen to my wife. She was just a child at the time. Just a child. And then she didn't know what happened. But every person that was there that day, I mean, they could have done what I did. I went out and I said, listen, let's get together and get this stuff settled. Let's talk and find out what happened. So I've got bits and pieces from here, there, there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let me let you go right ahead and finish up first, sir. Okay. okay thank you. I, I appreciate it. I want you to feel free to say what's in your heart. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And, and uh, I just have a few things. Um, like I said, I mean, I think that, um, you know, that the best thing that we can do from the past is, is really learn from it, like, like you're saying, um, and that in the spirit of, of truly helping and where, where you are, um, the best thing that, that you can do is to be as honest as you can. Um, and uh, I'm aware, I mean, I'm... On the one hand, there are sort of aspects of kind of specific individuals and people and things, but I'm more interested in how, you know, how we get to the point where, you know, when is it okay to kill and how we get separated from our own, you know, humanity and when, because at some point, you know, um, I, I guess, uh, and, I mean, I guess because, I mean, there are, are human this was a human tragedy, several human tragedies, in a very deep way, but unfortunately, uh, there, you know, this was, a, a, you know, just one out of many, just individually and countries, nations at war, 
And so the best place, like I said, the opposite of the black hole where it was empty and I was filled with anger and hate, I'm now at a place where the best thing to do is to really understand, to figure out, you know, um, just, you know, how we get to, you know, where we are, um, and, um, you know, so that, so that, the, so that these things don't happen again. So that, you know, uh, people who are watching this videotape and who are watching and hearing different things, that we can learn and we can also improve on ourselves. Like I said before, I mean, I, I have ways that, and everybody, I, I think that even though we're naturally connected, you know, we are hurt and we, you know, we end up being disconnected in different ways. And I explore in my, in ways for myself you know, if I have a thought of a fear against someone or something, I realize that's not the natural way, but what's, you know, what experience or what's going on there, you know? Um, I'd like to get to that, like, let me, let me put my part of here on it. One, I don't know how I can feel that myself, except to say to you, there's only one way to end it, and that is to stop hate. From the very beginning, um, I think that we both hated each other in a way. They hated us because we hated hate. Right now we did, we were against them. In other words, we were the opposites. Okay. I don't really hate blacks. Never did really hate blacks. But I was raised up to hate communism. Mm -hmm. They taught us in school this. Mm -hmm. Hey, when you hear the bells go off and the sun rings, you know, you're supposed to dive under the tables. Mm -hmm. I was raised up in the period of um, North Vietnam mm -hmm. and China mm -hmm. and Korea and all this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I saw all of the uh, movies they showed the church about the communists marching out, tying their thumbs behind their back with, with picture wire, and then shooting them to lay them in a hole. How the preachers and the ministers and the teachers got it first. Yeah. So I was terrified of communism, mm -hmm. terrified of them. Mm -hmm. And fortunately for them, they used that terror on me. And um, I was so scared of communism that I was willing to fight it. But I did not know we were going to go into a violent confrontation that day. I knew there was a potential for violence. There was every time we faced each other. But there was always a civil head there to keep it back, you know? Mm -hmm. Like when they got the flag at China Grove. The first flag they got to burn was the flag of America, the New York State's flag. Somebody said, no, 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 not that one, get that one. So then they got the flag you know, of the Army of Northern Virginia, which was a rebel flag, as they call it now. That upset me. I was going to go out and get back, but they, one man grabbed my pants by the belt and said, no, Wayne, no, Wayne. And then another one handed me a 357 or a 357 in my hand or a 45 one. Okay. I don't know which way it was. It was a heavy gun. And I had it in one hand and I was, come on, come on, hit me, hit me. But you see, I was stupid. I was purely acting on stupidity. I got no other way to explain that. Hatred will eat you up. It is a, it is a stupid drugs. It is a stupid drug that you will get addicted to and it will get worse, as you said, worse and worse and worse. And the more you let it eat at you, the more it's going to eat you up. It eats you up like it was a Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, that's the truth. It was the hardest thing for me to say, God, how do I quit hating? How? And I prayed that many a time, many a time. We got coming up at 801 and 158. Where was it? Is that the right intersection, Cindy? Yeah. And the uh, reason I'm saying it, she knows the intersection, what I'm talking about, is that. See, there was traffic coming, there was Mexicans running across the street there. But the way the cars come, they, by the time they start coming this way, they come the other way. They couldn't get across. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking now. How are they going to get out of there? So I stop and motion them on, come on across, come on across. I said, yeah, come on across. She says, Wendy, did you see what you did? And I said, what? You just let some message cross in front of you. I said, so? 
She said, well, man, just a year ago, you didn't hit on me. And I realized it was true. Otherwise, God was changing my heart toward the hatred. And I began to feel better. I began to watch Get Tanked on TV, you know. Oh, turn it off. Anything with black men, turn it off. I couldn't stand it off. Read it out. Couldn't stand it. That's stupid now, wasn't it? That's pretty stupid. Let's face it. But now I enjoy it. Now I can watch Michael Jackson and them dance and all this stuff, and hey, it don't bother me. I may not have the names right, but yeah. But I can enjoy it. I've been able to enjoy life. Honey, what's that magazine that I've got a present that I'm using? I'm reading that up. I don't know. I was reading it. It's about where I put it. Morris Deeds. You know who he is? Mm -hmm. One of his magazines. Mm -hmm. Why am I reading it? Because he tells the other side of the story. It doesn't get told. They show pictures and swastikas all over the people's heads and all this. And I think, my God, was I that bad? And she'll say, yeah, you were. I can't believe it. I was that bad. I see these grown men encouraging young boys. And, and they're going out there and they're, they're drinking and all this stuff. And I just, my God, that couldn't have been me. So, Couldn't yeah. have been me, so, but it was me. It, it sounds like some of the, um, like with the anti-communism was really ingrained in, in you, um, like at school, that it was really, um, you know, just forced and ingrained in you. And it sounds like um, what I heard you saying is that, that hate is a very, and yeah. I also well, said, hate is a powerful thing, but also it makes it even that much worse if if you if you're filled with hate and you have a weapon that makes it even even worse. Um, so and I I also just want, I forgot to mention um, that for me uh, Jim was my stepfather and it took me a long time to kind of even though he was very uh, you know supportive and nurturing it just took me a long time to kind of be close to him be, you know just because of the step parent. Well, that's what my but I was about. that's what I was about. about. I never knew what I, I never knew him. I want to know what he, I want to know who he was. What, what kind I, of man I want, to, I want to tell you that I this was... This hurt me. Okay, I, I want to tell you that I was, as a kid, I was 11 years old when he died. And I was just getting, emotionally, I was just kind of being close to Jim. Um, and so that, uh, I mean, as well as other things in my life, but that, you know, made a big difference in my life. Meeting, talking with you, uh, I really appreciate because um, I'm not even sure that I have the words right now. But, <laughs> let me ask, but, you, a, let me ask you, know, you a question. Um, Do you remember who it was that went into a courtroom that really made a difference for me? Who? And I got called to be a Jew then, you see. My stepfather, Chris Creesman, he was, he was Jewish. I was raised. Jim was a... Um, I was raised by a man who was Jewish. And until... After Gary Smith wanted to go talk to Grills and Johnson. I believe you're Mr. Johnson, aren't you? I am. Hi. Yes, I am. Okay, he wanted to go talk to Mr. Johnson. I said, well, why don't we? He said, how could we? He said, all we'll do is get another fight. And I said, well, we got to try. But I was trying and trying and trying. I said, well, nobody's going to go up and say, hey, I'm sorry. I'm going to do it for me. For me, because I want this off of my country. God has forgiven me, but can I forgive me? And I can't forgive me until I look the people in the eyes that I've heard and say, I'm sorry. I can't change it. I can't change the thing that I've done, but I can say with all my heart, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was going to happen. If I had a known mama too, well, I would have been home with my little boy and decided to want to watch TV like I usually did. The best we can do, I but think, from the past is that is where hate it. comes in. It will deprive you of your family. It will deprive you of your people. I lost my wife, my son, my home. But my God gave me a second wife. And she says, Wayne, get out of this. Wayne, get out of this. It's not you. You're not for hate. And you know what? The day I gave my last sermon, I gave it on anti-hate. 
And that was um, the week after I walked off of rally field. They were up there to thank God for AIDS. Now, how stupid can you get thanking God for AIDS? That's pretty stupid, ain't it? Lay down my dogs, you get out my fleas. Lay down my homosexuals, you get out my AIDS. That's how smart they really are. And she and I, have, she said, Mom, right, let's go. We drove off the field. And I told them, I said, I'm going to announce I'm through with you. That very Sunday, there was no, it was a week two later. weeks wasn't it, because they two told weeks. me that, they told me they, I would either give them all the addresses I had or they would kill me. I said, no, you're not going to use my address book. They were going through 27 operations on her legs, where she's had both legs crushed. Five days before, that, that truck was gone plumb over, a brand new Toyota pickup. But the A-frame falls out mysteriously, and he shows that it had been cut over halfway through. They tried to kill me because I was gone. I knew people's names, I knew all this. I just wanted out. I wanted to quit the hate. I wanted to get away from it all. That was all I wanted. But they wouldn't let me. And that's why I go out and I talk to schools now. I go down in Alabama down there, I talk, so that hat was given to me by those children. <coughs> Alabama, Louisiana, I'm trying to think. My mind is not that clever right now. It's okay. Yeah, and I got me on some drugs to help me mm -hmm. get through, but I'm proud of that hat mm -hmm. because it was given to me. We had 300 children, 300 young people sign up an anti-hate pact. That's what we call it, an anti-hate conference. I won't go do that, but that's the only kind of conference I've ever I will tell them what happened to us. And how it happened, I can't tell them because I don't know. I know one thing, it happened because I was stupid enough to follow people that I had, should have never been stupid enough to follow. Anytime anybody says, follow me and won't tell you where you're going, you best get away from them. <laughs> And I didn't do it. I, I was the last person to get in, a, to get in that caravan. I stood out in the yard, and the only reason I went is because I had four men out there somewhere, and I was afraid to leave those four men by themselves. I wish now I got right back on the expressway, stuck my thumb out, and went home. But I didn't. James Waller, I didn't know him, but he offered me. Well, now, like I said, when I was running, okay, I was trying to find a way out. I said, no, God, man, no, I'm just trying to get out of here. You're, you're, you're thinking like this. You don't have time to think when you're talking. Much faster you can think. He's like this, go. But that's when Roy told him he grabbed the shotgun, and I hollered, no, Roy, no. Well, at that point, I head back the other way. And then there's a boom, boom, boom. No, it wasn't the communists that fired the first shot. It was Roy Tony. Roy Tony had to jerk that shotgun out of his hands. And it, I don't believe James Waller had it, a firm grip on it. Roy Tony was a short, stocky, muscle-type man. I believe there would come a fight over that shotgun. And Roy Tony was about as scared as I was. I'm not saying he deliberately planned it, but I'm saying that he was as scared and stupid as I was. We got thrown into that. We got thrown into it by Eddie Dawson. Virgil Griffin, you know, Virgil Griffin knew that Eddie Dawson worked for the federal government. Did you know that? Did y'all know that? He signed the banishment papers on Eddie Dawson. But none of us was told that. We didn't know that. You see, we didn't know, we had a suspicion about Bernard Bucksovich. Mm -hmm. But a suspicion is not a confirmation, you know. Mm -hmm. It was, everything was too convenient for that man. But I didn't know, have the slightest idea that Eddie Dawson was with him. I saw him on TV standing side by side with you when they done the interview, you remember that? But you see, I thought he was there just trying to get information. That's what he said he was doing. He's playing both ends of his candles against one. Him, 
Virgil Griffin, Carl Covenant. Carl Covenant is one that said, um, now y'all go, but I can't go. And I said, why can't you go? I got family in Greensboro. I said, what difference does that make? I got family in Winston. Why can't you go? If you want us to go, why can't you go? Well, it's all due to an inheritance. I got to have my, get my inheritance. I thought to myself, that's a stupid thing to do. I mean, you know. But well, that's what he told me. But then, when I tried to pull my men out of the caravan and take them home, I couldn't. You know why? Because Harold Covenant already wrote a letter giving Glenn Miller control of my men. Those were my men. These men followed me. If I said, load up, boys, let's get out of here, they would have loaded up and got out of here. But Glenn Miller, at the stop sign on the other end, when Milano Cottle tried to get out of the car, he pulled a gun on Milano Cottle. Milano Cottle got a 15 year old boy out back there. Now he was a fighter. Milano Cottle was a fighter. We had been through some fights like you would believe. Man pulled a shotgun on him, Milano just took his hand up, got all plunged here. Just thank you. But Glenn Miller had a 357 said, you won't make it out of the car, Milano. We got to keep you alive. Why did he do that? Because he knew what was going on. When um, they say that the people in the car, the Cadillac, laid down on the floor when they started hitting the car with sticks, Virgil Griffin is the one laid down on the floor, got the women and said, holler, holler up. Lay down in the car, they got guns, they're gonna shoot us, they're gonna shoot us. How the heck did he know they had guns? How did he know somebody could get shot? I didn't know it. Why get women to lay down on top of you? You're such a brave leader. You know what I mean? And then, why let someone you know who works for the federal government lead you anywhere? Doesn't make sense, does it? And that's what they were doing. They led us into an ambush. I'm not saying that y'all set that ambush up, Mr. Johnson. I don't know who set that ambush up. Somebody was there. And they had guns, they had them on all of us. I believe it was just as likely they could have shot, you know, your people from your father's party. I don't think your father. You see, like a stepfather. They could have got them as easily as they got us. And I believe with all my heart that I don't think that it was us done all the shooting. I think some, some were responsible directly and other people indirectly. Huh? Some people, you know, um, had guns in their hands and some people, you know, like you said, kind of laid the groundwork and kind of taught, you know, uh, did things well, before and organized things. The boy who pulled the shotgun out of the car was um, out of the van. The clip, you know, when you feed them, wouldn't hold. They kept falling out. David Matthews, the only one had a gun that was fired. And he made a statement, and I'll tell you straight to your face, he made a statement, I got three of them, I said, you did what? I was truthfully trying to shoot above them and away from them. Just make them stop shooting, honestly. And I'll take a polygraph test or anything on that. I was scared to death. I know it makes it look like, you know, hey, I lit, took time to light up a cigarette and all this. <laughs> I got it lit. It's just a reaction, you know? But. Here's one that says, I got three of them. That really gets to me. And he's the only one that went back to the march with Virgil Griffin to march in Greensboro again. That was Dave Matthews. Roy Tony was set there and tried. Oh God, what have I done? Oh God, what have I done? I didn't mean to. You know? We had to get him out of there because he was about to go to pieces. Not, you know, we were afraid of him taking his own line. Roy Tony was that deeply hurt that he had done something. I believe, honestly, with all my heart, he's the one that shot you. Well, Jim, you were asking me a minute ago, and I want to just briefly tell, tell you, because I know my mother and Nelson wanted to, um, but um, Jim was, was a doctor, and um, he 
you know, his main concern was really helping people. Mm -hmm. And even like at our house, uh, you know, wherever the office was, where the kitchen or whatever, uh, people would, you know, children and adults would, would come to him. Um, and that, I mean, you know, and he wouldn't ask, it wasn't a thing about money. You know, he said, don't worry about it or pay what you can afford uh, because that's the kind of person he was. He also, um, November 3rd was two days before his 37th birthday. His, his sister and uh, father were flying down to celebrate his birthday. Uh, Mike Nathan, as you might probably know, um, had, had, you know, they and Marty have a daughter who was, I think, either three or six months at the time. Uh, you know, and that, I mean, there's a lot of things, and I'm not, I'm not into, I just wanted to share some thoughts. I mean, I'm not into, I just, healing and understanding. I want you to tell me, so that's what it is. I mean, I would like to know more about the man because I felt like I was there, I was right there with just a sack of, to, of his death, you know what I mean? And that bothered me. It really bothered me. And the one that was in the street, I don't know the name, but he done this. He was the last one I saw. He lifted his hand to pray. And then his hand fell. And I said, oh God, no. I'm about to cry, man. I may sound like, you know, I'm lying. But I was. I'm not lying. I really was. I didn't want nobody shot. I didn't want nobody hurt. Man, I was hoping and praying, hey, this is always a, some kind of go away, you know. Well, and, and other but it didn't go away, and um, it won't go away until others get honest, mm -hmm. talk honest. Because somewhere, somewhere, and I think it starts with Fulton Dukes. He's the agent who told me that he brought Buckley in. He told me that to my face. And he told me, we could have played you like a violin and there's nothing you could do because you're guilty of bombing Linda Tate's car. I said, what are you talking about? Linda Tate, who is Linda Tate? He said, Linda Landmark. I said, oh my God. Linda Tate was a woman who was um, had a car bombed. Linda Tate and Linda Landmark were the same person, but I went to school with Linda Landmark. Her grandmother and grandfather were like mother and father to me. She's the first girl I ever kid. <laughs> you know, so I mean, no way I would hurt her, but yet the explosives was found on my wife's car at that time. Came from the same batch of explosives. Now, I didn't put those explosives on my wife's car. I love my wife. This is my second wife, and I'll tell you to your face right now what I was sitting there. I loved my wife. I loved my son. I have no desire whatsoever to hurt her. So whoever put those explosives there, I think planted them there. Because one man, Roger Shannon, wanted my position. I wish he could have it. I mean, he could take it, you know. But he also offered me a brand new Harley. Who gets brand new, brand new Harleys away? Roger Shannon, because he goes out and deals with them. He, he got friends who would steal them, they come in, chop them down and rebuild them, you know? He does favors that way. Well, yeah, I also, yeah. These people, these people, I don't know, they won't talk to me no more, but they need to be talked to. Mm -hmm. why, would, why was Fulton Dukes and Bernard Buxby sitting at Roger Shannon's house watching TV together, waiting on the news break on Greensboro? Why were they doing it? Unless it was all, Roger Shannon must have had something to plan with it. But Roger Shannon's big deal was to go out to nursing homes, like the uh, Mueller Run nursing home with the most of Jewish. They paint swastikas on them. That's how brave he is, you know. Uh, I mean, just being honest with you, he's the fattest. But he wanted that title. He could have had it. I didn't want it. Well, also, but hate will eat you, like you said, you were with mm -hmm. hate, mm -hmm. it will eat you up. That's what I try to tell every young person. You know, the second sin was hate. That's what Cain hated his brother Abel. And God told him, says, send life at his door, and you will roll over, he will roll over him. Mm -hmm. The third sin was he killed his brother. 
First sin was disobedience to God. They ate of the forbidden fruit. Second sin was hate. The third sin was murder. You hate your brother, you'll wind up ruling over him. Well, also, I, yeah, and also I wanted to say that, that Mike Nathan and, and Bill Sampson and Paul Bermanzon were, you know, uh, and Paul still, you know, heal the doctors and healers, and that's the kind of people that, you know, that, that, they, that they are, that they were, and Paul still I know is. that now. See, but I knew it, yeah. but you know, I just want to know more personally than being a doctor. Like, I've often asked myself, one does he like trains? So I like Lionel's. Old toy trains. I've been a collector since a child. One does he like trains also? I wonder about his wife. What, what? I mean, you know, hey, she had her husband took away from her like that. All these things have wandered in my mind. And that's the reason why I went public, saying, hey, I'm sorry. As you noticed on that interview I did with Channel 12, I said, those people didn't give their lives. Their lives were taken from them. They were ripped from them by the hot flying lead. And that's the way I feel about it. Their lives were, their lives were taken from them at a time when they should have lived for you know, a long time. Mm -hmm. And I wondered just how in the world did it happen? It happened because somewhere along the line, somebody had to get the buck. ATF had to have some way of keeping their operations going. What better way? They weren't really getting their work with the Clan Nazis no more, so they tried to infiltrate y'all, and they tried to infiltrate us, then they tried to get trouble started up. Then they got their funding. Because they were going to have a cutback, I believe. I believe they done it for majorly for money, to get the money. I don't believe that was on my part. They said, they don't care about us. They don't care nothing about us. And it hurts me to say that. But like one of my cousins said, he says, I had to, he said, I had to tell him no. I wasn't going to work over there on that part anymore. He was, um, Narcotics. He said, no. He said, they actually want me to help set people up. I said, that surprised you? And he said, yeah, it did. I said, what are you, what are you doing now? He says, I'm still on vice and all. He said, but I'm not working narcotics for them no more. So. I did want to just say one thing, and I, didn't, I want my mother and Nelson to... Um, <coughs> and, um, I don't remember if I said, but I think it's... A, I feel like it's important to put names to things as much as possible. And the woman's apartment who I was in with those other people, uh, her name was Mrs. Greenlee. I, I just, you know, as we're all kind of put learning about different parts of this and other things, uh, I just actually learned her name a few years ago myself. I think actually Nelson told me. Um, but um, anyway, I just wanted to, you know, she lived at Morningside Homes and she let people in her house and she, you know, and she was nice in other ways too. And actually, I don't even know her. Um, but... Um, but I feel like she played a significant, um, good part in my life. And I don't know if I'll ever get to, I hope it would be nice if I got to meet her, but I don't know if I'm ever to thank her in person. Um, but anyway, I do, I do appreciate this, but also I know I want my mother and Nelson to... I want to ask you a yeah. favor. Yeah. Mr. Johnson, would you come over there, please? Do you, do you want to You're an assistant me? minister now, right? Yeah, I want to... Um, Am I right? Ask that favor. Right, hold on, brother. Hold on. Listen, I'm going to ask you a favor. Can we pray for you? Because you got a lot of hurt. Yeah. I don't, um, no, I mean, maybe in this moment it might seem more so, but I've, I've had 26 years of, of healing and learning, and there's still part of the journey to go. Um, if, if that's gonna help, if that's gonna help you to kind of share more and be honest, my faith in God, my faith in God has helped me through more things. I tell you, I know it's hard sometimes, but if any way, if not now, you should go to Mr. Dunn because I think it does make a difference, and God can make a difference in your life. Without Him, hey, I'd be the same radical redneck I was.
I couldn't claim to myself. I was sick. I was perverted. But I'm a medic. My hate had grown that bad. I never, I would have never thought I'd gotten with that, but I did. That young girl there was afraid for me to wake up in the mornings. But I thought I got saved to turn my life over to God and trust Him. It made all the difference in the world. I would have never thought Mr. Johnson would have took up for being a preacher. Well, I <laughs> would you have thought you would have? I didn't, but there were some people who thought so. so well, no, I mean, I am very, very spiritual. Uh, yeah, I do, I do have faith that there are good spirits out there and, you know, there's a God and, and so on. Uh, yeah. Listen, I'm hoping you the best. I wish, I wish somehow I could make this here today. Quit for one thing. I wish somehow I could do or change something that would change, you know, what happened. Mm -hmm. I can't. All I can do is look you in the face and tell you, I am sorry with all my heart. I repent with all my heart for what I was. I don't no more. And I can ask you to forgive me. No, I wasn't the one who shot him, but I was there. If Maybe if I had a hit at Roy Tony, you know? Maybe I should have done that and knocked him away. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because it was so, so fast and such little time. I don't know. You know, it just bam, bam, bam. I am not mean by bam, 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 like bullets. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like one thing after another, you know? The whole 88 seconds. It happened so yeah. fast that nobody was thinking. Nobody. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate your sincere apology. And for me, the best thing, like I said, we, we can't, I can't, and nobody can do anything. The best thing we can do about the past, we can't change. All right, he just, he's got diabetes too, and he's pretty much swollen, so he's our turn. Oh. But I believe you see, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I just hope the Lord can still use me, you know? I, like I said, I really, I mean, the words don't express, I really appreciate. At that moment, as an 11-year-old, I was, uh, it was very overwhelming and chaotic, I mean, for everybody, but especially for kids, for me, and, I mean, you know, and, but now, I mean, talking with you, I, there's, life is a journey, but this is a significant moment for me, and I appreciate your openness, and um, just speaking the truth to the best that, that you know. You know who hates, you know who hates y'all the most? Hmm. My 10-year-old son. I said, Ronnie, they didn't cause that. Yes, they did, Daddy. He used to be 10. He's not 10 anymore. He wanted to talk to me now. He wanted to talk to me now. Because when they started coming out, you know, about the hearing, I'd go down and get them straight now. I said, no, you won't. Shut your mouth and stay away. So I said, I don't need that, Ronnie. I said, listen, just stop it. But because I quit the clown, I quit the nonsense. He feels that I've singled myself out to be hurt. I said, Ronnie, they're not hurting me. I said, I hate to hurt me. Don't take up this hate, my son. I love you. He wants to talk to me. See, he becomes so prejudiced against the communists because of what happened, blaming them. What he heard and saw was people who were trying to fight a court case with me. You know? And I was saying to went on set in the courtroom that I didn't lie it. I said, this is a lie. Would you just leave it be? No, I didn't like it. Just like when I said her, when we they took us in, they took us in, right? We were all in here. Y'all need to go use the bathroom, don't you? Wash your hands good. I said, no, I don't need to go to the bathroom. Yes, you do. Go use the bathroom, wash your hands good. I had no idea that we would come around there and do that little test. Don't tell me. How come is it that of all of us that admitted we fired a gun, that not one of us come up with a trace of powder burn? But here was Sandra Smith escorting children out of the way, and she got powder burn. Does that make sense to you? They were covering up from the very beginning, and I knew it. 
And at the time, I was so scared. I didn't care. I was, I mean, I wanted, you know, to play through my life. So all the way, there were people covered up, and we didn't know who was who and who was doing what. We didn't know. Jerry Smith says, my God, right? You tell all these people working for us? I said, you know they got to be doing it, doing all this crap. Well, they had to be. But those of us who was there on that day, I mean, he was actually there. We didn't know what was going to happen. We were to be the victims so that they could get a conviction against the Communist Party. But they did not think they could get a conviction against the Klan. Because you know, there was a lot of sheet shakers in Greenville on different counties, you know. That's what we call them, sheet shakers. A lot of people whose family has worn the clown robe and all this, they wouldn't have got it. They wouldn't do it. But you put a communist up on a trial? Well, they thought Vietnam, Korea, bam, that had them. You see, the whole thing was, it blew up in their face because whoever done the shooting for them, I don't, I don't think we've done all that shooting. Whoever done it for them got the wrong ones. Absolutely, because I was supposed to have been killed. When my little colony got back to Winston Salem, it was all reported that I was dead. Yeah, I was supposed to be one of the targets, but instead, my dodge did not go over here. I dodge got around this side of the truck trying to get out. They tried to get back, you know. So I was not in that view quick from the bottom of that. And she looks at the angle of these things when we parked and from where we shot. They couldn't have got Sandra Smith. They couldn't have got it. Had to have been someone else doing the shooting. Someone from somewhere and I don't know where. I wish I did, I would tell you the name and tell you from where they were doing it. Because I would like to see the people who planned this and pulled it off, go on trial. Because I feel somewhere, somebody has kept a secret and they have covered up for cold-blooded murderers. I'm not a cold-blooded killer. Yes, if I'm faced with a crisis, I will do what I have to do. I hate that much about me. I went home on November the, December the 23rd or 4th and I told her, I said, Sandy, I quit. Why did you quit for it? I said, because I had to face a man down with a gun. I'm not going to kill somebody over a strip joint. I was a bouncer. But I was praying, oh God, please don't let me kill this man. He had a 38 in his hand. But in my hand, I have a 44 Magnum. Auto arms. Auto, you know, auto arms, it's 40, right, automatic, 45. And I finally get him to look down at my hands. He said, oh, 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 don't shoot me. I said, I don't want to. I said, put your gun back in the truck and pull out. Just go on. And he did. He was going to shoot me. He was going to shoot the cashier. He started swapping on the T-top money, called over a couple of the clothes. I didn't care. They can be replaced. You know what I'm saying? But I knew in my heart, though, that I was going to shoot that man. That scares me about me. I don't need to be put in that position. What, what year was that? that but if another man's going to shoot you and got a gun in his hand, you'll just about do what you got to do to feed yourself. But I decided right then, I'm out of this business. And that was the only place that would hire me later. I had places that would hire me. But you know what they wanted to hire me for? For a hit man. Serious. I had them come off me $10,000 to kill a man or kill a wife. Get away from me, man. I'm not that kind of person. No, get away from me. I don't steal for money. I don't do that. But you couldn't convince them of that. You know? So I quit that day and I went to work in Littleton. We had lived, I had lived there for two weeks and got a job going, got a house going. They came into the place down there and wanted that videotape that I had with all my mail addresses read. 
And then when I showed them that I had video record, recorded you know, their voices, their argument with me, and they had many to me, the whole covenant, and Grand Miller and them were on their payroll. And they said I could be on their payroll too. Who had met that? They, they said that I could be. So he, was, uh, he was with, the, what was it, the J.D. on Jewish Defense League, he said, but I don't believe him. Because <coughs> Jewish Defense League don't have nothing to do with it. Of with the um, Klan and the Nazis. This person had to be with the federal government. But they wanted all of my mailing address because they knew I was going to quit. They knew that they were going to lose a lot of members because when I got through writing it out, writing my last one out, they knew they were gone. And um, <coughs> they told me that I'd be dead before the year was out. Less than one week almost, she was thrown off the road. She took drove 35 miles, picked an elderly woman up, 35 miles by the back of the church, brought her home to feed her, then drove 35 miles out, I took her home, then about three miles from the house, the A-frame falls out. But the only thing is, a brand new toy to pick up, just been totally gone over three months before, five days before, I'm sorry, five days before. And the A-frame falls out. You believe that crap? I don't. <laughs> and neither does she. She didn't do nothing to nobody. But we figured out that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. But I'll let you go, buddy. I'm, no, I appreciate it. I wish there was something else I could tell you that would help you. Uh, well, you've, you've helped a lot, and hey, I'm gonna still. I'm gonna I mean, the what now? Can we pray together? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Lord, we thank you today that you have somehow seen fit to have us to be in the same room at the same time. And Lord, we know that you work in mysterious ways, your wonders to perform. Amen. And so we just come today, Lord, thanking you and praising you. Every minute, every day, every hour is an opportunity to bless you and to lift up your precious name. And Lord, we just want to pray your blessings upon this, our brother, Brother Roland Wayne Wood. And Lord, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory. And we just ask you to heal the broken places in us, that you would fix where we're broken, that you would strengthen us where we're weak. And Lord, help us to believe that we can yet do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Help us to believe that greater is he that is within you than he that's within the world. And Lord, we pray now for healing. We pray, Lord, for understanding. We pray for courage. We pray for uh, a sense of knowing that at the end there is neither Jew nor Greek, black nor white, bond nor free, male nor female, but when we surrender all of these false identities, we become one in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you for that possibility right now. And we say with the Apostle Paul right now that we've not reached it yet, but one thing we do, not dwelling too much on the past, but straining forward to the future. We just believe that we are to press toward the high mark of God in Christ Jesus. Give Amen. us a um, few minutes together in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, I'll tell you see. what, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, my Amen. wife, she goes to the Pentecostal Holiness Church now. Amen. I belong to what I call the Messiah's Church. That's where we still read from the Hebrew and the Arabic. Uh -huh. But I attend the Pentecostal church as well. All right. But okay. And in some sense, the name, of the, Lord Je the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is in my heart. Yeah. And that's why I have come forward like I said, I have repented to God. But he says, 
He can forgive you, but can you forgive yourself? That was the sermon I minister preached. All right. And have I you accepted myself, your forgiveness? I can't forgive myself until I have went to these people with honesty mm. and spoke honestly with them and tell them, I'm sorry. Mm. I was there hating you. I was there basically because of my hate for you mm. and the fear that I have for you, you know, as a communist member. Mm. But I had no knowledge that that was going to happen. If I had a, I don't know, I can't say that I did, had no knowledge. I think in a way, deep down, I was afraid that it could happen because mm -hmm. they had, I asked them over and over, now, are you sure we have a permit? Mm -hmm. You know, as well. Oh yeah, we're going to have a permit and we're going to have police or, you know, leading us. I believe that. Mm -hmm. Who told you that? Um, Virgil Griffin's people Virgil. told them that. Now, that's when they come to my house. And then it was two days later at Greensboro, I went in and I said, all right, boys, I'm going to find out they got a permit. They had not We're going home. But nobody would show me the permit. And I said, listen, I'm pulling my men out of here. Mm -hmm. And that's when they come in and told my cousin because mm -hmm. Hall Covenant had gave Glenn Miller control of my men. And I say my men, like I said before, I'm going to call them my men because I was in charge. Mm -hmm. I was responsible for their action, you know? Mm -hmm. But here he was, he took them out of it, took, mm -hmm. took that out of it. Mm -hmm. He put Glenn Miller in charge of it. We all know what Glenn Miller is now, don't we? Mm -hmm. He was on the protective witness program. Right. And then he writes back to different clan groups saying, I'm sorry i done this, will you forgive me and let me come back? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, about, that's about as stupid as you get. And did you also know that well, Virgil Griffin signed the banishment papers on Eddie Dawson? Mm -hmm. And at the federal courthouse, he made the statement, I'm going to a rally where I will be reinstating the Grand Dragon again. Mm -hmm. I looked up and I said, bullshit, I'm going to go to church. That was my language. Mm -hmm. I said, bullshit, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to thank God. Thank God it left. I'm free. That was the federal charge of young woman. Mm -hmm. But when he got to the rally, would you believe they put him put him at gunpoint? Twelve men marched him up front. Put who at gunpoint? Marched Roger Griffin up front. And they accused him of what he was. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, no, 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 not me. And they said, oh, yes, you. So here, your name. You signed the banishment papers on Eddie Dawson. How in the world did you say you didn't know he was working for him? Mm -hmm. He had no way out. That, he didn't quit the clan. You know, he told y'all he quit the clan. Don't you hear him? Roger Griffin. He, yeah, he didn't quit him. He, he got kicked out. As a member of the clan, did he? Yeah. yeah. He was. He showed he up to the uh, in June. As oh, he member. started his own group. But oh, okay. he got kicked out uh, of the clan that he was in. Yeah. Listen, let me say something to you, brother. Huh? I said, let me just say something to you. I've been listening, and I hear you, and I feel you. And uh, I just want to encourage you to go ahead and accept God's forgiveness. He's offered it, and it's available to you. And when you have reached out and done what you reasonably could, there's no reason not to accept your own forgiveness. So I just want to say that to you. The second thing I want to say to you is... Um, I'm, I'm, I do that, but I'll, what I'm trying to say to you also is yeah. these people who set this up, I still want to see them taken in for what they did. I don't believe uh -huh. that I will ever be able to rest. I'm just like you I was victimized too. Neither one of us completely understood. I'm sorry. I said neither group out there that day completely understood the role of the BATL, the police, the FBI, whoever was involved. Uh, I didn't have that knowledge. You didn't have that knowledge. We may, you know, I offer you my own um, apology in terms of, um, of uh, harboring certain views 
that maybe had some basis in history, but the fact is this, that I think that we've got to stretch out and communicate with each other and overcome those things. Uh, and to me, any religion worth having is a religion that's going to help you overcome stuff. If it can't help you overcome anything, you, oh. you know, it's pretty weak religion. My so, religion is based upon the salvation of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. And once that's done, and all I'm saying is this, uh, we've got to go forward now. Uh, if whatever life that you have left, whatever life that I have left, uh, let's just live it given the, the most truthful expression that we can uh, and doing the best work that we can. Uh, that's and that's what I want to do. Well, and I'm trying to do that, but I also I want wanted, to. <laughs> I wanted the facts to come out that y'all may or may not know, because I know mm -hmm. there is still a chance. I think, I'm sorry, I cannot what is make that? this thing stop squiddling. I turn it down. Hearing. It's my hearing aid. Oh, it's a hearing aid. Okay. Yeah, it goes up to my ear. I don't know how to say it. They they have blank, they run their mouths, and they were guilty. Some of them were guilty knowing it was going to happen. And that hurts me. That hurts me very deeply because, like I said, well, I, got, I lost a wife that I love. I lost a son that I love. I lost a home that I love. I lost it all. Then they would come around and fix my car up so that the A-frame would fall out and they'd cripple my wife up. Mm. I think, man, this can't just go on. Maybe I need to forgive more myself, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's hard to, it's hard to forget when they, mm. if they would just come up and say, hey, I'm sorry, but they won't. Yeah. And you know, in time, mm. though, um, it's, uh, there are a lot of things going on now. Let me uh, even, right here. <laughs> even the uh, work going on with the police department over in Greensboro right now, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but the chief resigned, the assistant chief resigned. Today's paper was full of information about the division. What I'm saying is the word says... I didn't know that. Yeah, that, that's going on. And there's not at this point a direct connection to November 3rd, but a lot of people know that it is. And here's my faith. It says whatever is done in the dark, that it will eventually come out in the light. Uh, we do what we can to bring it out, and, um, and we do it in the spirit of love. And I want to appreciate you for doing what you can, remembering what you can. I'm going to remember what I can. And uh, we've got a whole um, library uh, at, at Bennett College now where children can come and read and learn about this and they will probably hear some of your testimony about um, your own um, uh, well, I'll tell you seeking what, of forgiveness. I feel for like speak, you know, um, mm -hmm. a man named, he has, and, well he's one of the school commissioners in Davie County. Okay. Um, they had a group that was yet to start, you know, probably between the colors and mm. different people, whites and blacks and Mexicans and mm. so on. He said, Wayne, are you ready to speak? And I said, Black Rod. He told me, and I said, let's go. So we went. And um, that day there we got 200 children. Two young, 200 mm. young people said, hey, you're right. I told them, I said, look, this hate's going to grow on you. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. I tell them what it done to me, how bad it, I mean, I, I had become totally sick. Mm -hmm. but when I'm saying totally sick, I mean, my own mother didn't want me to come to her house no more. Mm -hmm. But now my mother calls me up and says, why don't you come over and pray with me? That makes a big difference, you know? Makes a big difference. Um, before, many of my family members didn't want me around them. Mm -hmm. But now, why don't you come over? Mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, here I was hating Jews, and like I said, so there was my stepfather was Jewish. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty stupid, wasn't it? But mm -hmm. that's the way I was. Hatred is stupid. Mm -hmm. And the deeper you get into it, the more you hate. The more you hate, the stupider you become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it makes you do stupid things. So this is what I got across to them. 
They worked good there in Davis County, and um, I went from there to another school, to another school, and I've been going on. We just, you know, I don't preach really, but I went to some churches, mm -hmm. and I was very lucky to speak there. And uh, this was a young men, young men's and young boys association, mm -hmm. where they have men, and, you know, both fathers and mm -hmm. sons. So the Lord has opened me up and used me there. Too. So I've been able to. But my, my main thing is I pray that the Lord will use me for what little time I've got left. Okay. But I do want people to know what happened somehow or another. I don't want to die with this on my conscience. Hey, I knew something I could have told and I didn't tell. Mm -hmm. Not that I hate someone, I don't. Mm -hmm. Billy Williams. We gave them our last $75 mm -hmm. to buy his son and his daughter something to eat. He just won them back. Mm -hmm. That very same day, a frame falls out of the truck. Mm -hmm. And that's when and she they, Then Billy Williams and another boy, along with the ATF, because my neighbor was watching House Force, went over and asked her, mm -hmm. what are you doing? And they shut her their badges and their security. They claimed everything we owned out. They would took my grandmother's mm -hmm. rocking chair. She had breastfed my mother in 1920. Mm -hmm. They cleaned everything off the wall. Mm -hmm. I come home with her and ran on that. It was well, a hearse, really. I, I bought a hearse and I could transport her with. Mm -hmm. And everything was gone. I sat down in the middle of a bare floor and cried. Mm -hmm. And Betty Williams, I really wanted to hurt that boy so bad for that, you know? When I got the chance, I heard something say, Wayne, I forgave you. Three times I finally just reached out because you got as far as you could about lifting him up, the mm -hmm. arms around him. I said, Billy, you're one of the luckiest men that ever lived. Mm -hmm. I said, because God's forgiven me and he's told me to forgive you. Mm -hmm. And I walked away. But I wanted to hurt him, you know? Right. But God has, God right. has changed my heart. And, and we've done, we'll... I think I've done things not because I'm trying to prove anything no more. I don't have to, mm -hmm. but because I want to. Yeah. I want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I think what I'm doing by going to her and others and saying, this was wrong, it should not have happened. That is what I should have done. That's what you, and that's I'm hoping what we some other do. people will get the courage to come forward and say what they know. Because somewhere along the line, you're gonna get enough information together that you're going to be able to say, uh huh, this person keeps coming out mm -hmm. right here, and that's it. And I believe Father Duke's name is going to come up over and oh, yes. over and yeah. over. And you know what? <clears throat> when you offer your truth, you actually, uh, that's, that's helping other people offer theirs. Mm -hmm. I mean, in other words, there's, that, there's power in you telling your truth and telling the story because somebody is sitting there hearing it and they almost ready to come. They just need to see somebody do it. And then, so what I'm saying is that you don't always know the effect of what you're doing on other people. And once you believe that, that's what faith is. If you see it, you know, you don't need any faith. But, when, but you, I want you to believe that you are already making a difference because you're doing this. That's what, that's what the faith is. And there's, um, I'm going to say a couple of things. I'm overworked and I got to get back to work. <laughs> um, but I want to say this. There's a verse in the Bible. It's in Ephesians. It's the sixth chapter. Uh, and it starts off, this part, most everybody is familiar with. Put on the whole armor of God. You know, you heard that one. But then it says that we are contending not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against power, against wickedness yes. in yes. high places. Yes. And powers, and let me tell you how I understand that. That, that you know, the, the powers get in us, you know, and, and, and we, and, right. yeah, but also when powers get in institutions, like uh, in governments, and in schools and in churches, that's when they're most dangerous. And so when the Bible says we are not contending against flesh and blood, 
I read that, that I'm not really fighting Rain Wood. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm not really fighting uh, this is my wife Sandy. Sandy or Martha, but I'm fighting the spirit that has got in us. Okay. And, uh, and, and so in some sense, that's why I can make some distinction between what somebody did and who I actually believe they are. Because I think we're all caught up in false identities. That our real identity is well, that we're made in the image of God and we're a child mm -hmm. of God. And when we get a hold to that, this other image can go away. So I want to say to you, my brother and friend, that I appreciate you, uh, and uh, you're going to be in my prayers. I you. don't uh, like what happened on November 3rd. I know you don't like it. I have uh, repented for whatever role I had in it. But I think and I thought from day one, that the main role in this had to do with the government. Uh, that used people to carry out things. I know the government. I know they did. I'm going to put this one on the thought on you. Okay. Yes, government did. But look back at the Yellow Dog Society. The government used the Yellow Dog Society to incite riots and cause problems. They used the Yellow Dog Society to bomb the churches in Atlanta. They used the Yellow Dog Society to burn the, the school buses and all. Right. That was to, um, what's his name, it produces the Thunderbolt? Dr. Fields, I think his Dr. name? Dr. Fields. See, yeah. he and the man who was the um, Imperial Wizard for the, for the Federated Knights, mm -hmm. they were together on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it to be a fact because they've admitted it to me. But the thing was, you see, I thought to myself, y'all are pretty stupid. If you're going to do something, why don't you keep your mouth shut? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, they're still out there. They're still doing it. They're still working it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I became a member of the Yellow Dog Society. No, not no more. Mm -hmm. When I walked out, I walked out on all of it. Night to the White Committee, the whole work, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. But the federal government will get to the top to reach the bottom. And that's what they have done. And have they have done it. That's why Harold Subden, Virgil Griffin, Eddie Dawson, Ben Miller, and one of them played their little role and danced their little tune. Mm -hmm. Because they were promised fire. Mm -hmm. I didn't want fire. I liked what we had. Mm -hmm. I wanted to keep it our little unit, little unit. Mm -hmm. But they played us. They played us like a fine violin. They, they did. Smart. They did. Well, listen, um, it is good to spend these few minutes with you. Listen. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, at the end, we do the best we can. But also at the end, the battle is not ours. I'll tell you what, we I hope one day maybe my can. mother can come. Okay. Oh, you know what? Um, mm -hmm. My mother confronted Martin Buckingham the day it happened. Yeah. She looked and said, you're the one that caused it to happen. He may have been now, the main organizer. Was, see, my mother taught the family members who were in the police department. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. In Greensboro? He looks at her and he hugs her head. She says, no, don't hang your head. I know you. You're a federal agent, and you caused this to happen. Mm -hmm. And he looked at her. What did you say? He said, do you remember what Mom told you? No. Huh? Uh, it's been so yeah. long. Mama said he looked at and said, yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Hmm. He said, yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Mm. My mother called his name to it, called his hand. Mm -hmm. the, the Winston Salem And uh, most of my family have Winston retired, Winston. but tell you what, they're straight. That's one yeah. thing I like. I like a straight cop. I'm not going to use no police. Mm -hmm. I think we need authority and, out there, but I want to be we, straight. Uh, I want to be honest with us, you yeah, know? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't give us this crooked law. Give us straight law. That's right. Well, listen, uh, I need to go. I yes, know y'all want to give you greetings. I want so to tell you, go. I thank you so much for coming, and thank you so much for accepting my apology. Son, I wish there was some way that I could say something. But I can't, except that I'm sorry. I know you hurt. 
Excellent. My son at least got to see his father. Mm -hmm. But Excellent. you were denied. And that hurt so very much, and I mean so very much to me. I appreciate that, but two things. One is it's very significant that um, by just being here, and you did say some things uh, that, that, um, that shed some light, uh, you know, about some of your experiences and things. I also want to say, Sandy, I'm sorry for your accident, and I appreciate your love and support that, you know, that you've given to him, and, and uh, I wish you both well. Thank you. Sure. Well, I'm going to say, may God go with all of you. And may the Holy Spirit bless each of you. Amen. Thank you. And I leave uh, appreciating your honesty. I appreciate your kind. honesty. I'm sorry it took so long, but I've been sick. And I wasn't joking when I said I was sick. <laughs> if you would like to see me again, please don't hesitate to call me. Yeah, if, if you try number. to call me, uh, leave a message. But I don't know when I'll be able to get back to you because I'm staying down here yeah. until he gets out of the rehab. Okay. Anytime you would like to see me again. Okay. And I'll be back. I'm hurt my neck and all this. All right.